Hi, my name is Pyle Patel, and I'm a product manager uh, at Google on the crisis response team here, here in New York City. How many of you recognize this screen behind me? Okay, most of you. Um, this is the emergency broadcast system originating in the 1960s that used traditional media, such as television and radio, to get critical messages out to the affected public. Now, fast forward to 2012, and there are now wireless emergency alerts, which you might also recognize receiving on your phone. These are geographically targeted text-like alerts that are sent to the affected public, uh, uh, to, to mobile users. Now, while these are very effective at letting people know when they're in danger, they have their limitations in providing details about the uh, emergency situation or actionable content. So where do people go to get this additional information? Well, there's this thing called the internet. Um, so let's take a look at what the internet does look like. Um, traditional search results two years ago. Let's say you're in central Tennessee, you hear a siren go off, you think it might be a tornado, so you search, is there a tornado in Doweltown, Tennessee? Traditional search results are actually not that relevant because there's no mention of that uh, tornado warning that was just issued moments ago. It shouldn't be this difficult to find critical information when minutes count. And this is the problem that our team set out to solve. Uh, we did this by building an emergency broadcasting platform for the internet called Public Alerts, where we take authoritative uh, emergency warnings, such as this tornado warning, and surface it on everyday online tools. So a big component in building this platform was actually getting the official content. So how did we do this in a scalable way? Every alerting authority has their own means of disseminating their emergency information. Some have a website with the latest information, some have a Twitter feed, some have no online presence at all. So how did we go about doing this in a scalable way? Well, it would be much easier if all these alerting authorities use some type of standard to get their messages out. There is such a standard for alerts, and it's called the Common Alerting Protocol CAP. CAP was developed by, in consultation of 100 emergency managers nearly a, a decade ago. So to show you what uh, the importance of, of this standard is, here, here's an alert in this raw text format. It's a tsunami warning. And those of you that can read Bahasa Indonesian can see that this has really rich content, useful information about the uh, upcoming threat. Now here's the same alert in CAP format. CAP is an XML spec that allows the alerting content to be standardized in a flexible way using uh, dimensions such as language, event type, and severity. We've worked with over 18 different alert alerting authorities around the world to onboard their critical information through this standard. And this is just the beginning. So, now, nearly a decade since the devastating tsunami in the Indian Ocean, how do people get information online? Well, if you're in northern Sumatra, Indonesia, and you have the Google search app installed on your Android or iOS device, your phone will buzz to let you know that there's a tsunami warning in effect. You'll also be given relevant information about the tsunami, such as uh, the expected arrival time, and the expected wave heights. This is all provided in an easy to consume, very familiar way. Similarly, if you're in Sein Min, Taiwan, and it's typhoon season, you are notified on your phone when there's a typhoon warning in effect. Or let's say you're in Timbiqui, Colombia during rainy season, and you want to know, you want to check if your house is going to be affected by a landslide. You can quickly find this information online. And it's, uh, the, the key is it's the authoritative information. Since we've launched the public alerts, we've received numerous user feedback reports saying that thanks to this information being online, people were able to take action to stay safe. Some people have even said this was their only means for staying connected uh, through their mobile phone. So two key takeaways. To build a technology product in the humanitarian space at scale, design for openness, use a standard to maximize interoperability, 
and make sure you take that open data and present it to, you, to, to, to the general public in an easy to consume, familiar way. Thank you.